Greetings and welcome to Terra Prime Live. My name is Erock. I am an apprentice. <laughs> anyway, uh, tonight's show. Uh, sadly, uh, I have nobody to introduce tonight. Um, our guests um, had prior arrangements uh, that they uh, couldn't get out of tonight. And of course, like everything, duty calls and family first. So, anyway, I uh, we'll hope you're watching anyway. But um, I'm flying solo tonight, and we're going to be talking to you tonight about. What we, uh, you know, we, we talk about how we use them and, and all the others, but tonight we are actually talking about what a saber is. Um, so tonight um, we're going to go head to tail, inside and out. Any little tiny fun little pieces of stuff you can buy for them. And uh, yeah, we're going uh, to be talking about basically everything to do with, about LED lightsabers, no matter where they're from. Um, so, uh, what this is here, uh, our showcase for the, uh, the evening, will be the Ultra Sabers Overlord. Um, for, for what I do with TPLA, Ultra Sabers makes extremely durable, for me very affordable, I'm not made of money, I got a five year old. And, you know, I have five of these in the house, not five Overlords, five Ultra Sabers in the house, I love them. Um, at TPLA though, we, uh, we like, and we like to say and strive, uh, you know, we insist on being absolutely impartial to saber manufacturers out there. Basically, our our premise is if we if you if you make an LED lightsaber, we like you. That's it. Doesn't matter if you mass produce them or make uh, one of a kind masterpieces. We salute you, and um, you know you you give us the weapons we use. So yeah, really, guys. The um, the only difference between lightsabers uh, with the LED stuff. Um, Really is, you know, some designs work better for certain applications more than others. Everything else is your personal preference. Yeah, literally, your personal preference. There's nothing else to it. More time can go into some. Yes, I, it's, again, it's just it's how much workmanship do you want to go into your weapon? And there is a range of, of different types of sabers out there. Ranging from you can get one of these things shipped to you for about a hundred bucks, um, going right up into thousands of dollars. And you know what? It's all it's all what you like. If you like it, buy it. That's that's what I say. So anyway, um, yeah. So tonight the um, <clears throat> main course would be a, an Ultra Sabers Overlord. And um, yeah, let's let's go through it. The reason why I'm going to do what I'm going to do tonight is because I was kind of careless with this thing, and as I was changing the batteries, I broke the speaker. And by breaking the speaker, I, I didn't actually break the speaker, I broke the wire connecting the speaker. And I sh I'll, I'll show you when we get to that part, but yeah, there was no fix in this one, so <clears throat> it's a dead saber for now, and that's why I'm going to, uh, to gut it for you tonight, live on the show. Um, we'll be talking about saber parts. Uh, their functions, and all sorts of good stuff. Okay, so at the bottom here, bottom of your saber usually keeps the batteries in or the electronics in some cases. Uh, you have your pommel. And of course I only have one example to show you, but that's okay. Um, pommel usually has vents if you have sound. Um, sometimes you can get a, uh, a button in there. Uh, to activate your saber. You can get recharge ports put in your pommel. Uh, really, it's, it all depends on the way you put your guts together on the inside. But uh, then I'm just going to go straight simple. Sound at the bottom, battery pack, switch, LED, emitter, and, uh, and blade holder. I don't have a blade here. That's fantastic. That's OK. We don't need one. So got your pommel. Um, this guy here is, uh, is an MHS compatible pommel, meaning any other MHS or modular hilt system, as it stands for, uh, can uh, has the same threading, and you can interchange these parts. So, I have an MHS pommel and emitter on this saber. What I can do, just for funsies, and since it doesn't work, what I can do is uh, put the emitter on the uh, on the pommel side. <laughs> And literally have a, a reverse overlord. And that's the beauty of MHS. Um, <clears throat> a few saber smiths offer it. I got the cover tech up here. That'll be weird. Um, a few saber smiths offer MHS. Uh, you can buy 
a whole whack of, of MHS parts at the Custom Saber Shop, which, um, and by the way, um, there is a Q&A active right now. I'm just going to go turn that on here. If you have any questions, uh, or corrections for that matter, by all means, uh, hit the, uh, the Q&A below, and then I'm, I'm reading them right now, so since there's, you know, nobody here to chat with today. You guys. Uh, so, yeah. So, get your problem. I'll just put it back in. By the way, here's what a, an overlord looks like backwards. Kind of nice. I might wire it up that way. Who knows? Anyway. <clears throat> so, we uh, just did mention the, um, the pommel. I'm now going to talk about the emitter. Uh, these are also called blade holders, and they usually uh, fit a one inch diameter blade. So, that's. Um, Anything from the, uh, well, basically all of the, the one-inch blades uh, on TCSS, the mid-grades, heavy-grades, ultra-edge, uh, mid and heavy from Ultra Sabers. Um, they're pretty much pretty much compatible right across the board. Uh, I've heard of cases where some people had to sand their blade tip or blade end down just so it fits a little bit better. Uh, I know my TCSS emitter um, could stand a, my blades could stand a little shaving to get it in there. It's pretty tight. Uh, most, for the most part, though, it's it's relatively the same. Uh, your emitter, your emitter will have um, MHS if it is an MHS emitter, of course. Um, uh, if it's not just drilled right into the hilt, um, you'll probably have an MHS emitter. You have your standard size MHS threads, um, of course, your the end, and normally you'll have a uh, a set screw here. And I know a lot of sabersmiths choose uh, three, um, what's it, uh, eight, um, eight thirty. No, this is embarrassing. It's eight thirty-two, eight hyphen thirty-two, um, as a set screw. Uh, here it is. Here's a one-eighth uh, inch long one. Uh, this one does pro uh, protrude from the hilt a little bit. But I used um, the 116th uh, 832 set screw in the hilt here in another saber of mine so it fit fleshly because I, well, I stripped uh, one of them. So that's what happens when you play with it too much. Okay. Anyway, I'm um, just going to butts around with this a little bit here. There we go. Just, just so I don't lose it. So, we've gone over the pommel and the emitter. Um, just a couple other uh, MHS parts you can get while we're on the topic of MHS. Uh, you can get a coupler, which has uh, male ends on both sides, and what that does is it allows you to thread your, oh, well, that's right, two sabers together, and that's how you make staff. So if, uh, if you don't have any sound, you don't really need the vents, but uh, as all of my sabers do have sound, Except for this one, for the moment, uh, we uh, we do need vented. Vented, believe it. These these A6 aluminum hilts, by the way, these are A6 aluminum. Most of them are stronger in some cases. Um, this one is anyway. Uh, that's if you if you block up the holes, uh, you'll pretty much muffle the sound that comes out of it. Nothing nothing really sounds. Uh, an unvented pommel, no holes anywhere. It's, uh, no vents means no sound at all. So the nice big open vents, you know, the more you give it, uh, the louder your sound will actually exit the saber um, up to a point, I guess. Uh, there just, just gets so many holes where it doesn't matter, but I don't know what that is, but um, anything with a, a good deal of holes in the bottom definitely does a good job. All right, so you got your staff coupler. They come in all different shapes and sizes, too. It's pretty cool. Just going to take it off for now, but here's the uh, the Overlord's actual emitter, MHS. Here's the retain bolt. But another little joy that I got from uh, TCSS is a choke. Um, a lot of MHS hilts don't naturally come with chokes, um, so this little uh, this little bad boy goes right above the emitter, or right above the LED. Sorry. Right above the emitter, that's where the blade goes. And the emitter goes on top of it. 
There we go. So what it does is it uh, gives you a little bit of an extension. I'm just going to put the palm back on to keep my speaker from flopping around. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, you can get some, some pretty weird-looking designs. And this choke, beautiful. And um, this this is one of my longer hilts, so this, uh, this choke is kind of superfluous at this point. Um, <laughs> but choke, uh, if you get a choke, this one here is powder-coated uh, black with the silver in the middle, so powder coat style one, I believe, on uh, TCSS is uh, Saber Builder. Um, yeah, just, uh, there's no end of customizations, or you can call it a customization, it's really just a part edition, but you do customize a base model of somebody's Saber, so technically it's a customization. <clears throat> Simple. Simple and effective, that's what I like. Okay, so, um, yeah, now I don't have any of them because um, TPLA is, is combat based. Uh, there are activation boxes, like um, like Luke Saber. If you give me two seconds, it's right around the corner. Sorry about that. Dead air on a live show. Ooh. Anyway, um, so this is just one of those toy lightsabers, the plastic blades. But it does illustrate the point. Uh, it does have a little box that uh, that sits right here, and you can buy these for LED sabers. And the ones I've seen look fantastic. The one thing, I mean, this is just the toy model, so it's it's not so obtrusive. Um, it's also how you unlatch the blade so that it comes out. Um, the ones that I've seen for the LED savers, they can get pretty big. Uh, I don't know. I've always wondered, often wondered if they would get in my way for combat purposes. And Some people say yes, some people say no. It's all personal preference. You can probably get one and learn to work around it. Um, I don't know. I, I just like the, the solid hilt. Um, sometimes I even take uh, my cover tech off which is uh, where we're getting next. So um, if you do fit it, uh, there are two types of uh, connectors that you can use on these sabers to, you know, connect it to your belt or, or whatnot. Just going to put my emitter on so my LED doesn't flop around. We're getting to the insides, I swear. All right, you have your cover tech wheel. Um, so this will give you, like, episodes one, two, and three in Star Wars. Um, Episodes 4, 5, and 6 uh, generally use the D-ring, um, or a little clip that you could just hook onto a, well, a hook onto your belt. This one is a little bit different, just like the CoverTech uh, radios uh, used by security guards and, and flashlights and such. You get CoverTech uh, those as well. Mag lights, I guess they would be. So you just clip the wheel onto the belt clip, and it swings but hangs nicely off to your side. And then to get it off, you squeeze the two little side panels here and pull up. Done. And uh, I've worn a saber on a cover tech before. Uh, you, can, you can jump around like a fool and they don't they don't fly anywhere. They, they stay on pretty well. Uh, unless the D-ring clips down. I don't know. I've never never used a D-ring to, uh, to compare it, but Cover tech will keep this thing on your belt pretty pretty well, uh, especially if you just have the hilt on. So um, let's see another thing we can talk about here, and there are. Uh, I wish uh, one of our guests was on tonight, uh, for he makes these from scratch. But um, I'll get you. I know I took it out here. I have so much stuff on my desk. Let's see. Up here, perhaps. Oh, I took one out for you out there in Saberland. Uh, here's one. This is a blade plug. Just a simple one. Um, really, uh, anything will do the job uh, as long as it blocks out the light from the LED and keeps your LED unit from sliding out the emitter. Um, it does its job. Uh, with an MHS-compatible uh, hilt uh, and emitter, you don't need one because the threads on your emitter are what will lock down your LED unit and keep it from sliding out anyway. But if you don't have one of these things, um, you'll definitely need a blade plug because otherwise 
you're, you'll sit around and you'll have your saber on your, your cover tech, and as you walk, you hear it ring like a bell, and eventually, you know, the, the LED just kind of dangles. It's no fun for anybody. Everybody gets to see your LED. That's that's so embarrassing. I mean, think, think of the children. Yeah, anyway. So, um, yeah, blade plug, and it fits in your blade holder. Just like so. Got to loosen it up, of course. Slide it until it's a nice fit. You can keep it flush if you want. Uh, I don't know. Different strokes for different folks. I like to keep it flush. Then when you actually turn a, an LED on, if you have the ability to and uh, don't have a dead saber in front of you, um, I should have brought one in. Anyway, this ring of polycarbonate lights up whatever color your blade is. It does shine through the windows if your emitter has windows, but uh, your LED doesn't go anywhere, and when you shine the hilt at somebody, they just see a, a nice ring of whatever color you have, not this gigantic 10-watt lead engine RGBW train light <laughs> flying in their face. It's um, These things are really bright, folks. Um, very, very bright. So... Have any questions? Nope. Uh, remember, if, uh, <laughs> since it's just me and you tonight, uh, if you do any questions, click on the Q&A thing down at the bottom here, and you'll see a little chat box pop up. And please ask me a question. I believe me, I, I have nothing but time. Anyways, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start moving on to some of the guts. Let's. Uh, we started at the uh, the pommel side last time, so we'll start at the um, the emitter side here. Uh, just below your emitter, or choke, then emitter, if you have that's what you have, you will have your LED. And uh, on certain models, there aren't any of these things here. Uh, I'll get to these guys in a moment. But um, mostly, you just have wires hooked up to this thing, usually a whole bunch if you have a color changer. And if you have one of those, there's really no need to take out your LED because you can just use your computer to program all of the colors. Uh, in this um, this LED setup here, uh, we're using a 10 watt LED LED engine, and uh, LED engine LED, sorry. And I've got it hooked up to quick disconnects simply so I can remove them like this, separate the uh, the LED unit from the hilt, and I could then replace it with another color. Um, since I don't have a color changer in the saber, uh, I have to wire up the diodes on the LED to match what I'd like, and that's um, that's just the way it is sometimes. But uh, that's no biggie. Some more toys for you here. So when you um, when you do have a, an LED that no longer works, or you just take one apart, uh, what happens is you end up with a heatsink. It's got a reflector mirror in the inside, which aims all possible light straight up into a column. That's why they call it a collimator, because it collimates your light, quite literally. It's your science lesson for the day. Uh, we have the, um, the wrench here, the larger wrench. This one works in uh, another saber I have for um, the larger, not flush uh, set screws, but the ones with the, uh, the larger head, uh, hex head. Um, I have an example in my box, but it's not really that important. So when you pop out the um, when you pop out the the collimator lens, that sticks to the uh, the LED down there, right to the top of the diode, and you'll have an, an outer aluminum shell. And this little guy here is very important. Uh, whether you have one of these guys or not, you will definitely have one of these on a, an LED saber if you buy one, because this is known as the heat sink. This little piece of aluminum here, um, the way this one is set up uh, as delivered by Ultra Sabers, uh, amazing, amazing product. Um, it put you put the uh, the LED board or chip. Yeah, your LED is is just like a little tiny computer chip. With uh, back it up. You have eight solder points, so you can connect all four diodes to a positive and a negative wire. Um, depending on your setup, you can then run those eight wires down to your uh, eight little holes on your little color changer, 
and uh, yeah, fix it all up. I think you can put all the uh, the black ones together though and run a straight one down. I I've not done it yet, but one day. Um, most of these things you join, <clears throat> like the main power line comes up through the hilt in one wire, and so does the uh, the black one. In my setup, I have a, a black one and a and a brown one, uh, because I have flash on clash. We'll get to that in a moment. But uh, right now, uh, this guy has had blue, red, and white wired in. So the green diode wasn't even being used. And that's okay. That uh, allows you future possibilities, doesn't it? So, what I, this one just died. Um, nobody could figure out what happened, so no problem. Um, this is now a trophy and something I can study and, and learn from. And this, um, yeah, it's, a, it's a nice one, too. You know, if you get a magnifying glass, it's it's really cool. And my webcam is not doing that justice, but it you know, it's, it's like Tron in there, man. Anyway, yes. So you have your heatsink, you have your LED, and everything just kind of fits together as a piece. And what happens is the extreme heat, if you want to call it that, it's not terribly hot, but it's enough to hurt itself. Uh, it gets the heat gets absorbed in the aluminum, which is threaded to the outer part here. And oftentimes, uh, this overlord feels warm up by the grips here because the heat is actually getting transferred to the outside of the hilt, which is great because everything is aluminum. My hand literally just soaks up that heat, and it doesn't fry the LED, which if you don't have a heat sink, you will do. So bear that in mind if you are uh, doing it yourself for the first time and you literally buy every single one of these things in its components. By the end of the show, I am going to have a saber for you. This Overlord, actually, in all of its components on this desk. And we can talk about it and do so. Um, ah, got a question here from uh, I'm Sharpie. Hi, I'm Sharpie. Uh, this is the Ultra Saber's Manticore emitter. Um, you can buy it on the Manticore, uh, which I did not do. I just bought it standalone because I thought this thing looked awesome, and I... Uh, it's kind of Darth Molly, and if you want to call it that, and it, uh, yeah, definitely, uh, I thought it belonged on the Overlord, and I'm, I have not regretted doing that since, uh, since I got it. <clears throat> okay, and um, oh, while we're at it too, um, I'm going to get to the um, the Emerald Driver later on. Uh, this is not an Emerald Overlord. Uh, Ultra Sabers has an Emerald board, which is um, Similar to, but very unique in its way, um, a, a color changer board, which allows you to hook up one of these 10-watt uh, outlet engines and go on your computer and literally tweak with Windows uh, and just slide the bars up and down and tell your color how much intensity you want it to. So you can literally adjust everything. It adds a pulse, uh, from what I understand. Uh, pretty cool. Um, but it plugs in USB. The rice port, which is also the question there, too, We'll get to that as well, uh, but first we're going to have to talk about the soundboard. I'm going to have to chop that out of the saber first. So, oh, just a, just a word uh, to everybody out there as well. That's blood, yo. These sabers, uh, yeah, if you're trying to get something out or if you're just fooling around and you slip and your thumb, say, hits the, uh, the threads on the MHS, um, yeah, that's pretty sharp. So, uh, mind your step. <laughs> I left the blood on because it looks cool. The health inspector is going to come after me after this video. So don't expect it to be there for long. Okay, um, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show you to, uh, I'm just going to take the cover tech off. We talked about it, but I didn't do that yet. Bye bye, wrench. Alright, so, yeah, cover tech is removable, and that allows, uh, when you're not holding uh, the set screw in your hand, that allows definitely for a uh, more solid grip. Nothing gets in your way on the bottom. And if if I'm going to be doing full contact sparring, say I make the trip to Ann Arbor, my sabers will definitely have their cover techs off for, for sparring, personal preference. Okay. Um, so, let's see. This out here. So I think what uh, what we're gonna do. You see all the, the goodies that we've looked at before. 
Okay, and I'm just going to mute myself for a moment here. Because my microphone is in that camera. So, welcome to the lower view, the table view. Ha. Ah. Um, all right, so what we're going to do next, uh, I've already taken the liberty of uh, taking the electrical tape off. Um, it's usually what holds everything together. What died in the first place was I was taking the battery out, which, as you can see, the battery pack was damaged. Um, and then the speaker, oh, this, this thing is a mess. Yes, I understand that. Uh, my own doing. I was careless, as I said. I was trying to get it out, and I did get it out, and I got it out a little too much, and I pulled everything apart. But what I've done here is I've taken the black wire, which is right here. Put my finger underneath it there. This little tiny black wire is supposed to fit in a little hole. You can't even see it uh, right next to the red wire here because it was shorn off literally right at the plastic, uh, such that the black insulation pretty much blends in with the uh, with the plastic. And it's I had to look twice to see that. Oh yeah, there. No, that's where the black wire goes. There's nothing I can do about that. Uh, maybe it's just my level. Um, probably stick a pin in there and try to solder it. Well, I don't know. Um, yeah, that's that's maybe for a rainy day. But uh, what I'm going to do is just replace this battery pack and speaker combo, um, just like that, and just get a new one of those on, and we will be rocking. So for now, I'm just going to pop the two-sided tape off, get that going. And other thing too, I don't know where my other speaker is, so here is the speaker. So it's a tiny little 1.5, uh, 1 inch, 1 1.5 watt. Pretty loud. I've never been dissatisfied with one of these speakers, ever. So you talk about all of the, uh, in here, by the way, here's one of those button heads button head screws for the larger wrench. That's what you get on a cover tech. Okay, um, yeah, you, you never hear people say, oh yeah, I bought that uh, that $50 Qui-Gon Jin from Walmart. Boy, is it loud. You never hear that. But um, I've never heard anybody say that any of these LED lightsabers were, were not loud. And I've not seen uh, anybody make a quiet one so far. Maybe I just wasn't looking. First thing I'm going to do before taking everything apart here is I'm just going to put this back in so I can get a little bit more wire out of here. I just want to leave myself with a lot of room with these uh, this switch here because I'm chopping the switch off next. That was the one that broke off when I pulled it. If I wire this to the outside of that broken red wire, this saber actually works. All right, so let's do some creative snipping here. So one, two, and What I'm doing is uh, I'm just trying to get as much um, as much wiring out as I can. Um, now these, um, you're probably wondering, what the heck is that all over your switch? Uh, this is an anti-vandal switch. Um, what happens with the anti-vandal? They're like the reset button on your computer. You push it in, and it doesn't click. It just, as when you press it down, it turns on. When you let it go, it stops. Um, the other uh, type of switch that you can get, and is probably what you're going to have if you uh, don't have a saber with sound, is one of these guys. Sorry. Here it is. Okay. Now, this is off a computer component, but um, this is a latching switch. It clicks. Click on, click off. So with a uh, Sabre without sound, with the, the soundboard usually controls whether the LED turns on or not. Um, when you don't have a soundboard, the switch does all the work right here. Hey, okay, how exciting. But just remember, um, some, some boards out there allow you to use uh, a latching switch on the soundboard. So it's uh, just check check with whatever you're buying and buy the appropriate parts. If it says latching, buy a latching switch. 
and vice versa. Um, the other switch is t uh, type is called a momentary. That's uh, another word for the uh, audio, not the audio visual. I'm so used to, I'm a tech geek. Anti-vandal. And I guess the reason why they call it an anti-vandal switch is because it's got a really flush top end and dirt and stuff doesn't get in there. So you, you can't vandalize your own switch. And um, yeah, just getting back to what was on here. Um, now, uh, you can get uh, switches with a, a bolt that, that keeps everything turned around. I wanted my switch to pop out a little bit, not terribly easily, but um, easy enough so that I could just give it a good wedge and it would, and it would come up, just like I showed you tonight. Um, this is Teflon tape, and what I've done is I've put it around the, uh, the 5 16 threads, I think it's called, or these are the 9 16 And they fit on a, a 9 16 hole like this, and they're everything from very, very high temperature hot glue gun to bolt it on. Uh, or you can just kind of ghetto out and put some Teflon tape on it and press fit it. Works for me, and it works too. Nothing has ever, it never loosens up. It stays in there like it's supposed to, and it works like it's uh, like it's advertised, as you will. All right. So now, with nothing holding anything back, we can slide out the guts. If you are willing to take a saber apart, the one thing that's going to stop you from just doing it is the fact that your switch is stuck to the outside and doesn't go in through the hole and come out the back. So if you want to do this, A, make sure your warranty is, is up and over and expired before you do this. B, uh, what you would like to do also is, um, yeah, just snip your switch off and then see you can remove your guts. So I'll try to put them kind of where they belong. Heat sink. Cosmetic cover tip. Some more parts for that. Speaker. The LED driver, which we'll get to in a moment. Definitely going to remove it. All right. So, in this jumbled mess, these are the internals. <clears throat> that would otherwise cause a saber to light up. All right. And for the record, it is a mess in there. That's not Ultra Sabers. That's me. Uh, I've taken this thing apart and put it back together before. So <laughs> don't look at this and go, oh, my God, what's Ultra Sabers doing? No, this is my handiwork, guys, and I'm just learning. But even still, I was able to get this thing working perfectly, except for that one stinking wire that broke apart. Anyway. I'm not worried about it. You learn from your mistakes, and I know now what not to do. And it didn't really cost me too much. So this was just stupidity. Made my sounded saber a stunt saber because I just wasn't that careful. Anyway, so um, I'm just going to untangle a few of the wires here. Uh, I'm just going to remove the battery pack. Speakers. So it's just a AA battery. Um, this uh, this saber here, because it does have sound in it, um, requires the lithium ion setup. Um, and the one that is used is two times fourteen five hundred protected lithium ion. They have to be protected in the sabers, guys. Otherwise, they <laughs> have fun with that. They will under fire, and that will not be good for your soundboard. So these things shut off at what? Uh, Charge up to 3.6 and fire until something like 2.8, I believe. It says it right on it. Hang on. 2.75 and yeah, they, they'll they'll take a charge up to 4.2, which is pretty cool. I don't think my uh, I don't think my charger will do that, but yeah, they will stop at 2.75. You can't see that, but I can. And uh, as soon as this thing hits 2.75 volt discharge, <laughs> shuts off, shuts itself off. So. You'll be swinging. The next time you make an impact, your saber will just literally shut off and die and be dead until you change the batteries. This is a good thing. So, yeah, um, always buy your lithium-ion cells protected unless the soundboard you're buying states that it has the protection in it. 
I don't think any of them do, ladies and gentlemen, so I do believe you will always need protected lithium ion cells if you are doing it yourself, sabering. Right. All right, so battery pack. From probably wondering what all of the uh, this blue stuff is. This blue stuff is called shrink wrap. And shrink wrap is the bomb. I'll, uh, I'll give you a demonstration of how that works uh, later on in the show. All right. Let's see. Okay, so um, let's see. Now that we're kind of getting to it, um, we do have the, um, the soundboard up next. Left myself more than enough wire here to, to do everything over again when I need to, which is good. Otherwise, I have to buy a new wiring harness. That would not be good. Here in its glory. Now maybe I'm biased because I own five of them, but here is the Ultra Sabers version three soundboard, and I am very partial to this this board. It has served me very very well. Um, so what um, now soundboards? We could do a whole show on soundboards here, uh, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, uh, the soundboard is generally what has uh, the amplifier, the memory that stores the, um, that stores the sound fonts. The Ultra Sabers Obsidian has built-in memory. Um, the, other, the other cards, uh, Petit Crouton, a whole bunch of them, they use uh, the micro SD cards, which are awesome because then you just pop that thing out if you want, plug that into your computer, do the settings, and then when you put it back in, you have the settings. Um, I'm Sharpie. I asked a question earlier about um, the rice port. Now, the rice port is what you do when you want to simply not have to take that SD card out, but have it connect directly to the computer through a specialized rice cable. I used to know what rice stands for. I honestly don't care. It's a quarter, it's like an eighth inch jack to USB. And uh, people swear by these things. So uh, if you have that ability, cool. The Obsidian uh, does have a USB port. It's a mini USB. Uh, once you get it connected to the computer, uh, you basically just upload the sounds to the board here, and uh, and you can do the, the clash settings, the swing settings. Uh, this thing does do an alternating lockup between the two LED diodes that you, you have wired, in this case. Uh, I had red, green, or sorry, red, blue, and white on my RGB. Sorry, not everything over here. Uh, so this one here had red, blue, and white, uh, which made purple with a white flash. And so this was my violet amethyst. Uh, what happens with this neat board is um, the power goes out, hits an LED driver. We'll get to these in a moment. Um, or a resistor, if you have that. And then goes to the, uh, it sends the power straight up to the LED. And... Basically, all the red is now firing, and on the other side of the circuit, you have the black return feeds, so you'll have three of them in total. Uh, you'll have the one from the blue and the one from the red. That made the purple, and then the white one had its own black line, or the negative feed, uh, which was brown, which connected to the brown wire on this board, um, labeled FOC. And the, there are plenty of wiring diagrams. I think FOC is the third one here, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, anyway, you've got to look at the wiring diagrams when you do this. Don't take any chances. Um, and the wiring diagrams that are available online are fantastic. I mean, all of this information is, is out there. I learned it simply from spending hours researching it. And I've used a soldering iron in the past. I finally get to have an application in my life once again where a soldering iron might be necessary. This excites me. I am that much of a nerd. Yeah, you guys have been listening to me for 40 minutes. Uh, thanks a lot. Um, <laughs> anyway, this is getting kind of techy, but um, yeah, I'm hoping you're enjoying this. Um, if you are, you know, post a post a comment, guys. Um, we do have the questions there. I'm Sharpie. Thanks uh, for that question. 
You asked, is, is the Emerald driver similar, similar to a rice port for color customization? Well, something that you can buy along with an Emerald, uh, sorry, with an Obsidian board from Ultra Savers, uh, for my knowledge, um, and from, um, from TCSS uh, and other, uh, other manufacturers, uh, they do sell the color changer board uh, or color extender, as, I, as I've seen it. Some of the boards nowadays, like the Igniter, they have all of that stuff built in. You wire all those things to your board, and you just let your board do the job, and, well, do I ever want to try one of those? <laughs> Very badly. Uh, last week, Rob Petkow showed us that the, um, the Crystal Focus 7. Uh, <laughs> you guys, there's so many options out there. It's uh, if, if you got the money, the sky's the limit. That's the way, that's the way I see it. But um, it's really your personal preference. That's all it boils down to. Uh, the uh, Ultra Sabers now offers a solution to this uh, as well. Uh, they have a, an add-on board, which goes, I believe if I've seen it properly, um, you'll have everything kind of snapped together here like this. And then the Emerald board, I believe, fits here, or I think it's here, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe where the buck puck sits, because you don't need a buck puck with the, uh, the Emerald driver. Um, that does all the, uh, the work for you. So, when you just have a soundboard, uh, so the, oh sorry, uh, about the Emerald driver, uh, I do believe it is similar, whereas uh, you do have, depending on how you order it, uh, you do have access to all four diodes on your LED, and you do have to plug it in USB with the Emerald, but you are able to choose all of those, uh, yeah, all of those cool things, so, uh, just like the other boards do, so Ultra Sabers has definitely, uh, definitely, well, I, I definitely want to give it a shot, just to see what it's like. Sick of, I'm sick of popping quick disconnects. They work though. Kind of fun to install yourself. All right, so um, okay, going here. So if you don't have um, if you don't have a uh, an LED driver, you're going to need one. One of many different options out there. Uh, one you could use um, one of those. Um, one of those boards that doesn't need one. It has the LED driver built into the board. I believe the igniter is such a board. Uh, you might have to throw a resistor on certain LED applications that you use, but uh, again, if, uh, if you're doing stuff like that, you probably already have a good basis of uh, having researched this. Right? Anyway, sorry. I won't do that again, by the way. What I have uh, opted for, for my LED driver, is uh, what's known as a buck puck. Um, just as a quick rundown, when you plug in two 3.7 volt batteries into a system and get, uh, <laughs> you get uh, that awesome, oh, 3.7, sorry, you get um, that 7.4 volt system. Uh, 7.4 volts running to an LED is enough to, to knock it to the moon. Uh, you, you will burn it right out. So what you have to do is you do have to get some type of either resistor, um, you have to get a, a buck puck or an LED driver. Uh, this one here fires at 1,000 milliamps, um, which is more than enough to, to power <laughs> uh, the two diodes plus the flash that I was using. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, the, the 1,000 seems to be pretty bright. Uh, you can use uh, the 1,000 on the reds, how uh, you can overdrive it, pretty good, but uh, there are 700 um, milliamp buck pucks for those. Uh, if you're not, you know, really looking to, to, to blow your, your stuff out of the water, you know, you don't want to overdrive it, go ahead and choose the smaller one for red, but for blue or for greens, um, the 1000 is, is awesome. And depending on how you do it, you might need a few of these. You could go up to the 1500 one. There's, there's a lot you can do with this, so be aware. So I'm just showing you the, the system that I have currently. So this, uh, this guy, after your soundboard, uh, keeps your LED firing nice and bright and, not, and keeps it from frying. All right, so let's take another look here. What am I missing? Okay, so I'll just kind of put everything sort of back together again, <clears throat> just in case you were wondering how all of this comes together. So, you have your switch. 
Now, when you have the, the batteries plugged in, there is a constant, uh, just a, a small, small power draw. It, it's always on. Uh, if you get a recharge port, uh, which basically hooks up between, it would be wherever it would fit on the hilt, but you'd wire it in right into the, uh, the battery feeds, and when you plugged in your recharge port, uh, what would happen is it would kill the electronics, it would just turn it off, and just charge the battery. Uh, when you took that out, the battery would then feed the soundboard again, and you would be able to give it that momentary push on your momentary switch, which would ah, tell the saber, hey, I've, I've just been told to turn on. And sure enough, the you would strike the LED. Uh, the LED would, would start up. Um, the neat thing about a momentary switch is what happens if you, say, just tap it when it's on? Well, if you just tap it when it's on, uh, what it does is it then takes the, um, it takes, it's called the lockup, and it, it flickers between the, the negative lines of the flash on clash and the negative return. And that's all flash on clash is as well. When the motion sensor is tripped, it just says, hey, obsidian board, your negative feed is now flash on clash line instead of regular negative for whatever you set it to in the, uh, in the sensitivities uh, in, the, in the software when you plug it in. So you can, um, mine I believe is set to just 0.4 milliseconds, it goes bang. Flick, 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 flick. Really, really close. So, uh, pretty cool. You can customize that as well. Uh, you can have it flash like a fast strobe, and you can have it just kind of go up and, you can do a lot of stuff. Pretty cool. Okay, um, the other thing is, uh, say you don't like the fact that, um, that's a good question by the way. I'm Sharpie. I just asked, uh, does, do Ultra Sabers uh, come with a recharge port? Uh, we, yes, they do. Uh, do, do, the re <laughs> do the recharge ports come with kill keys? Yes, it is an option. And with a kill key in your re uh, recharge port, if you don't like the fact that there's a small amount of current being drawn, you can get a recharge port with a kill key, and when you insert the kill key, it literally chops power, just like it does for the charge. It chops the power to the saber, and it doesn't matter how many times you press this button, nothing will happen. There is no power going anywhere in the saber. The circuit is officially broken. So, uh, kill keys, um, they do extend uh, the life of the saber too. If, if you do have certain sabers and certain boards where when they do have power, the LED light on your switch will just kind of blink annoyingly and won't shut off. Another good application for a kill key if you don't want that, that to happen, and you don't want to have to unscrew and pop the battery out, you can just get a kill key on your recharge port, and that is technically the only off switch besides pulling a battery that I've seen. Um, right. Okay, so let's see. We've gone over the, uh, the flash on clash, how that works. That's just how the obsidian works. Um, I've seen on the, uh, the Putty Crouton, which I've investigated deeply, uh, there are motion sensors there. Um, I'm not sure if they're solid state or not. Uh, the igniter has it as well. Again, not sure if it's solid state or if it's the uh, sort of little, looks like a little resistor that you kind of put to it. I've uh, never actually seen one live. Um, all of mine are solid state, but uh, depending on your motion clash, uh, your motion sensor and clash sensor as well, um, that uh, that does have a, a different different feel as well. I, I find they, they do different things, or I've seen them do different things from different applications. Right. Okay, so, um, yeah, that, uh, I'm, I'm thinking we've uh, we've pretty much covered it here. Um, so, yeah, I guess the, uh, what else are we missing? If you own one of these sabers, what else do you need? You need one of these. If you have a, a lithium-ion setup, you're going to need a lithium-ion battery charger. Um, believe me, if you're ca caught without one of these things and you don't have a recharge port, yeah, yeah. How are <laughs> now, most of them come with a charger, but uh, if you are if you don't have a lithium-ion charger and you're buying a lithium-ion saber, just something to keep in mind. It's a good idea to order one of these things because uh, your regular charger will not charge lithium-ion batteries, um, and regular batteries won't work at least in this setup. I think it worked for about two seconds. <laughs> so. Uh, what did we miss? I don't think we missed anything. Yeah, well, now here's uh, here's the um, the subjective part, guys. Here's the hilt. 
So this one here is uh, save the best for last, I guess. It's just a, a, an A6 aluminum tube. It has uh, some nice milling marks. They're not sharp. They, they do give it a nice grip when you grab it. Um, so yeah, really, what, uh, what style of this you get, what style of this you get, and what style of this you get is really up to you. But if you've got them all, you get something very, very similar to this. With, of course, better wiring probably, um, not so spaghetti-like. Again, that was me. But um, yeah, when I redo this saber, everything is, is going to be nice. Nice again. This saber shall live again. Right. Okay, so let's see. I guess the, uh, yeah, heat shrink. Let's do a heat shrink demonstration. All right, I'm just going to grab my little bag of wires here. That's a quick disconnect. You do end up getting lots of spare wire, which is kind of cool. It doesn't have to be glorious. I'll just do it quickly here. What I have here is a, a Weller, <laughs> a Weller WPS 18 MP, tiny little baby soldering iron, uh, goes up, it's an 18 water, 9 volt. So it, this is a hobby soldering iron, this is not for serious electronics. Um, this thing will not allow me to, to do any soldering on the, uh, the LED unit, for example where you need a, a much hotter soldering iron. Uh, Rob Petkow from Genesis Custom Sabres was on last week, and we did uh, talk a little bit about that as well, so uh, I do thank Rob for that information. But for tonight's episode, we are definitely going to get what we need done, just with this guy here. So you'll also see how quickly it heats up. Yeah, so I already have two pieces of uh, two of the others stripped here, which is good. Uh, just gonna strip this one a little more. Another thing too, um, this is uh, a twenty-six gauge wire. Uh, pretty much all you need for saber applications. Uh, you can get the twenty-four gauge wire if you want it a little bit thicker. No problem there. I don't think the resistance is is anything to worry about. Um, with wire, the thicker the wire, the more resistance naturally you're going to get in it. So depending on what application you're using it for, that, that might be a concern if you want to say, I want to use thick wire so it's indestructible. Well, yeah, it will be, but um, <laughs> at what cost? So if you want to get into this and if you want to assemble a saber, I'm going to show you the basic joint without burning everything down. Uh, I'm just going to show you the, the basic joint on, on what you'll need to do to. Uh, that's bright, isn't it? Basic joint on what you're going to need to do on how to uh, how to join any two wires together. So, <laughs> just to teach you a good habit, before you join any two wires, you take a piece of heat shrink. Do not join the wires before putting on one side of the heat shrink. Now this is a moot issue. My wires aren't connected to anything. They just dangle down. So, but Just as a good, good rule of thumb, and why I'm doing it anyway, if you're going to be putting heat shrink on something, after a joined wire especially, you're not going to be able to unjoin it and put the heat shrink on if you forget to do it first. It only took me three times, guys. So, uh, yeah, I know. So, and now I'll just twist it together. So, it would be pretty strong this way. I could put some electrical tape on it. I could get away with it. Not with murder, per se, but I could get, <laughs> as, as the saying goes, murder equals smashing these things with heavy-grade blades on, on somebody's fencing mask, for example. Um... Yeah, I, I could probably get away with it, but um, 
if you really want to make a connection work on this saber racket, you just heat up your uh, your solder here. Again, this isn't a very hot iron, so I have to do a little bit of create painting of it afterwards. And you just basically tin up the wire so that the uh, the solder sinks in. And just for demonstration purposes, that's good enough. But uh, until it cools a little bit, and I'd be happy with that. That's that's a firm firm. That that would break apart if it was just twisted. So. Good to go. And then for the added measure of strength, and this is why everybody uses this, this is why this stuff is awesome. Heat shrink. This is the blue wonder wrap. It's in, it comes in black. It comes in all different colors. Um, my Canadian source up here, actually, it's actually called the source. Uh, they sell it in white. Blends in with our snow, eh? And then, um, yeah, man. You put your uh, your heat shrink over top of the uh, over top of the joint you get your hot air gun that's specifically designed for joining heat shrink or you do what I do and just get a lighter you don't get the flame anywhere near it you don't need to as soon as that hot air hits it this thing literally just shrinks if you do it too much you actually do start to burn it with the lighter so that's another thing to keep in mind, but voila, folks. One wire joint. That is what you need to do. That is all you need to do. If you buy the parts kind of pre-wired and just want to wire something together that's been pre-built. Uh, when, when I say pre-built, I mean the LED. Um, that's uh, that's a little bit that, right now. That's out of my league because my soldering iron is not hot enough to solder the pads with enough solder and actually get it hot enough to stick. So if I get a hotter soldering iron, this will become open to me, and I will be able to just simply stick wires to these little pads on the on the board. But um, that's that's one thing. One thing you need to pretty, pretty much the only thing to keep in mind if you're if you're not fully comfortable soldering boards yet, um, you know that's that is something that you might have to do with some of the more uh, advanced parts. Um, but for the most part, this is pretty much one of the hardest things that you're going to have to figure out. Was just a simple twist the wires, solder them together, and then put heat shrink over it. All right, so I'm just going to make sure. Don't want to miss any questions here. All right, so well, I have to say I give a shout out to thanks and thanks to Anne Sharpie who has been the only person to ask me questions tonight. They're from Canada too, so this is awesome. The plus one that one. No, I'm not. Okay, here. There you go. What does this do? <laughs> hey, just figuring it out. Anyway. So, um, yeah, if uh, you have any last-minute questions, we've got about um, two minutes left in the show here. Uh, if you do have any questions about the parts you see, um, let me know. Otherwise, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put myself on mute here. There we go. And officially, thank you very much for watching me Disassemble my saber and talk about it for an hour. If you actually made it all the way to this point right now and are watching right now, then thank you. And on behalf of TPLA, uh, I would like to say, um, well, thanks uh, to Master Anonymous uh, for allowing me to do this. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be having more shows like this. Um, I hope to take this, what we've learned tonight, and have some guests on who are able to talk about this way more in an advanced manner than I can. What I've shown you tonight is the basics. How to wire up the saber, what it looks like, what the parts are. That's it. That's all. That's what an LED saber is, folks. And um, if you know your tool, well, it's just, you want to be a Jedi, right? You got to build your own.
just kidding, you know, you can buy one. But um, yeah, anyway, much, much more personal if you put it together yourself, believe me. So uh, my name, once again, is Erock. I am a TPLA, TPLA apprentice. And on behalf of Terra Prime, I'd like to thank you again for joining us on the live show. Uh, join us every Friday for our live shows starting at 7 p.m. Eastern right here on YouTube live feed. And we, as always, wish you happy sabering, happy building, and may the force be with you.